Ding, ding, ding. Okay. It says we're life, but I swear to God, if it does what it did the last time, I will be so Man, mad. Can you, can you record it on Steamyard also? Like as a um, backup or no, I think it's only um if I have the premium plan, that's when they let gotcha, you record. Gotcha. Okay, so okay. I have the premium plan. But I hope they don't mess me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, like I, I searched on I searched about what happened with our video. Yeah. Um, and basically that particular day, something was happening with StreamYard. Oh. And therefore uh the 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 very tiny message that they had in StreamYard was things will not be recorded on Facebook. It'll be streamed. Oh. People can see it live, but yeah, it's not gonna yeah. be recorded. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was like we had such a good time, and you. Got I know, I know. <laughs> it got played. <laughs> I, I got for sure because I tried so many things. How to like return it? How to? Yes, it just went away. <laughs> but how are you, man? How's how's the I'm weather? Doing... Where you at? Good, man. It's getting hot, but I'm I'm doing good, man. Yeah, it's starting it, to get it, warm. I wonder if it gets hotter in your end. Uh, so right now I'm in New York. I'm visiting family, okay, and it's, the it's touching. It's touching the 90s very easily. Okay. I think I would I, I would take 110, 115 in Vegas over 90 in New York any day. Oh, because it's like just dry heat, right? It's not like yeah, humid. yeah. It's it's like hot, like we're like really really hot, but like the, the humidity. I can't. I'm not a big fan. Definitely <laughs> not. I'll take this I any guess. day. <laughs> that covers one of. Uh, the questions I had, which eliminates, <laughs> which eliminates a couple of hu you know humid states or, or whatnot. <laughs> uh, but so glad to have you again, man. I love yes, I sir. love uh, seeing the stuff that you post. You know the journey, because yes. one thing that I really like about what you post is you know um, you don't just post the success, but you're posting the journey or posting the failures you're posting the funny things the things that piss you off you know yeah. so it's, it's like it's it's a full reality so i, I appreciate that you give thank that you to brother. your audience yeah, thank you. I appreciate that <laughs> well, well speaking of that just you know um i guess no 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 let's 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 do our little icebreaker first before we go to the real yes. questions <laughs> Uh, I got I got a couple of ones, not not similar, to, uh, not 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 exactly the same as before, but okay. Let's, like see. let's see, talking to pets or talking to babies. I'm going talking to pets. <laughs> I don't want to deal with babies. <laughs> um, phone phone and bathroom or no phone and bathroom. Oh, phone and bathroom for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no regrets, no apologies. Bro, I, I sometimes bring my phone in the shower. I ain't even going to lie. Like, I'll be answering emails in between washing my face and shit. <laughs> Holy crap, no way. Like, like your yeah. phone, uh, what phone do you have that doesn't like, Just I know they say, 11. yeah. <laughs> iPhone 11, really? It takes that? Yeah. I mean, I don't shit. put it under the water. I put it like on the shelf on the side and. I'll grab it in between, <laughs> yeah, in between soap and a couple of emails. <laughs> Bro, if it if it's true that Apple and whoever watches stuff through our camera, they can be like, "What the f is he doing?" Right they ain't now? watching me no more. They're like, "Nope, I'm turning this channel off." <laughs> Yo, enough. <laughs> okay, sort by price or sort by rating. This is in your rating. hometown. Rating. rating for okay. sure yes rating. all right um sauce on the side or sauce on top sauce on top extra sauce oh. on top extra sauce. <laughs> um speeding ticket or parking ticket uh i'll take a parking <laughs> ticket <laughs> yeah, like, Actually, I, want them. I just had i just it's funny thing uh when i was in new york back in january i actually Thought I parked legally. I paid for the parking. 
but apparently it was like they have all these like signs where it's like you can't park here on Wednesday if you're in a red car between three and four, like all these things. <laughs> yeah. And I missed one of the 800 signs and I come back to a hundred and a hundred and twenty dollar ticket. And I actually oh just God. I got it in January and I actually just paid it like a few days ago. I forgot about it. Um, but, thankfully, there was man. no added fees or nothing. New York <laughs> is notorious, man, with that. Like the, Dude, you're hundred percent right. The signs are everywhere and there's it's cameras so everywhere. It's so, so stupid. $120 for a parking ticket. And I paid like $12 to park. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. No, they don't. I, I like, I really think there's no way with all these cameras and science or whatever that they're putting all of that for the sake of the people. There's no way, oh, man. No. They're running a business, no. bro. No, exactly. <laughs> to protect them, not to protect you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Instagram famous or TikTok famous? Instagram. All right. Oh, man. Abolishing TikTok. All right. Um, vacation or staycation? I think I know the answer to this one. But I'll let um, you answer. That's a good question. Honestly, it's not, I can't pick either one. I'm not a big vacation person. Honestly, like, but you're all over bit. the road, bro. Yeah, but I, I'm doing like, you know, I'm I'm working on my business and doing things yeah. that I enjoy. Like, I believe in like building the life that you love that you never like. So many people, like, I feel when they go on vacation, they go on vacation to escape, and it's right. like most people plan ah. their vacations better than they plan their lives because it's easy to I escape and change. So I yeah. built the life that I love, so I never feel the need to go on vacation. That that that's a really good, that's a really good twist. <laughs> I like it. Passenger or driver? Driver. Driver. All right. Nobody can stop your speed. Like just <laughs> sit over there. They can just get uh, me while I'm parked. <laughs> I mean, on your, I, you know, we'll talk more about what you do and, and why you travel so much. But do you always go by yourself when you're driving? Or do you, are you always, like, snatching somebody with you on your journey? Um, sometimes I go solo. Sometimes I bring my girlfriend with me. Um, and I meet up with a ton of friends along the way, um, nice. you know, build, building my business and my journey and sharing it online. And like I've built, you know, a network of, you know, hundreds of, you know, probably thousands of people now. So I always have friends and stuff that I can meet up with along the way in almost every that's, town, that's every awesome. city. I mean, let, let's get into that, you know, and then let's yes. get into that. Tell everybody a little bit about you know, what you do, who you are, and, you know, we'll, I, I got a bunch of questions, but we'll see if we get to all of them. I literally have 18 questions, but we'll see. Wow, awesome. <laughs> awesome. I love it, man. Sweet. Yeah, definitely, brother. And it's funny thing. I actually uh, had a friend. He just started his own podcast um, called, uh, I don't know, Reckless, Reckless Responsible or something like that. And he was, you know, asking for feedback and questions when he was building his podcast. And I was his first episode and he was like, you know, you've been interviewed on so many different things. Like, what was your favorite? And I actually brought up yours, how you how you just I like just the questions you come up with right away, because like I'm already laughing and I'm in a good I'm, like, I'm in an extra good mood because like, we're just, you know, it. the silly yeah. questions and they're funny. And like so it's like, the, you know, the icebreakers. So it's like, boom, you get into the questions. Everything's open and fun. And it's like there's no pressure. And so I actually told him I was like, I really liked what you do on, when you do this, like that you were one of my favorites it. out of all that I've done before. Oh, you know Yo, yep. he's been recorded. He's been yeah. recorded, quoted. Right. Can't take that away. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, man. Um, right now, I am. Uh, my name is Jameson. Uh, I'm a full time Amazon seller. Um, I've been selling on Amazon full time now for about I don't know, not nine years. Feels like a hundred. Good hundred. Years. Um, <laughs> Bro, watching your journey feels like you've been on it a lot more. Yes, yeah, it feels. But like you did, you did, you did other things similar to that before Amazon. I would suspect. Uh, but continue. Little bits like part time on eBay, and then yeah. before that, I just had you know just a regular you know I, I worked at a, as a waiter at Buffalo Wild Wings for like four or five years. Um, that was my my last real job that I had. Um, I got fired from Buffalo Wild Wings, um, and in between you know working at Buffalo Wild Wings and before that, I ended up getting uh, addicted to pain pills, um, and basically over like a four three four year, three four year period, uh, I ended up losing everything. Um, fired from my job, you know, spent all my money, evicted from my apartment, court ordered to leave, moved back in with my mom, started stealing from her, you know, more and more drugs. And it got to the point where all my drug problem became more expensive than the amount of money that I was bringing in every month. Wow. So then you start doing, you know, shady things, dishonest things, illegal things. Um, 
And then the drugs just kind of took over and I kind of just spiraled out of control, lost everything and got clean and sober after four, four tries in rehab, I got sober. Um, and then pretty much for like three years after that, I pretty much lived in my basement and played World of Warcraft. Um, just played computer games and ate junk food and just would literally morning to night from sun up wow. to sun down World of Warcraft every day. Do you feel like um, that was the replacement of like getting off? Yeah. Yep. I got rid of one drug in sense for another one in a sense, you know, another addiction. A tricky one, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. And so after a few years of that, dude, it just like, you just got sick of feeling like a loser and you get more depressed. So then you play more games, you, you, you skate more, you eat more crappy food, more, just more trash and just filling my body with garbage. You know, all the processed fast food, all the stuff, you know, stuff that's not good for your mental health. And then wow. you just go in a spiral of just being unhappy. Mm -hmm. And that's like, like Tony Robbins says, it's like you get no man's land where it's like, you're not really happy, but you're not unhappy enough to do anything about it. Right. Um, it doesn't hurt enough. Exactly. You just live in that num numbness of life. And eventually I'm just like, I don't want to live this way anymore. I was like, all right, I better go out and find a job. And I was applying at places, you know, just middle of the mall, you know, lids, you know, all the clothing <clears throat> stores, vans, journeys, you know, all the clothing stores at the mall, You'd get interviews, tons of interviews. Nobody would hire me. Um, I even started like, you know, once I wasn't getting those jobs, I would kind of go down and I started applying at like Target to get, you know, to stock shelves, Walmart to push carts. Um, and wow. You know, this is probably over like a year, year and a half period. And it's like that was just sent me sent me in another depression is like I'm not good enough to push a cart at Walmart for seven wow. bucks, bro. Like an hour, like wow. they hire anybody off the street, you know, <clears throat> and it just like and then my very and then I ended up moving to Nashville, um, applied for jobs out there. Same thing. And during this time, I started doing eBay, you know, just like selling stuff in my house and you know i started going to like garage sales and you know finding stuff I, at thrift stores i guess what inspired that hey let me try ebay you know while you're but, like working. yeah I've, I've always been on ebay on and off for probably about okay. 15 years now so i always knew how ebay worked and i and mm. prior to you know uh getting into drugs and stuff like that i always sold on ebay on and off if i ever found, seen a good deal or i would hunt for good deals and then I'd be like, oh, that I know I can make some money on that. Let me go flip that on eBay and make a few bucks or whatever. Nice. Um, and so I always knew how to do eBay. So I was like, you know, that was the only thing I was fairly good at. And I had a good knowledge base of what sells on eBay and what people want, you know. So I started like going on Craigslist. You know, people would sell their video game collections and they'd have like, I've got, uh, you know, a Xbox and a PlayStation and 50 games. I want 200 bucks. So I would go on eBay and I would look up each game individually, see what I could get after fees, after shipping, look up the oh system. Okay. looks like I can net about 350 bucks after shipping, after fees, after everything. They want 200. All right. Let me see if I can talk them down to maybe 125, 150, and then go flip this over the next two months. So I started doing that eBay um, and, you know, still trying to find a job. And after the point of, you know, I started building up my eBay a little bit where I was probably selling you know, about two thousand to three thousand dollars a month on eBay. You know, and wow. enough to make enough. Yeah, you know, uh, like... you know, if you want, you know, make a little bit of profit every month, enough to yeah. you know pay for ninety nine cent spaghetti and stuff like that. And still trying to find a job, um, and it just wasn't going good. And I was just like, dude, like I'm just gonna push hard on this. Like, you know, if I put put a little more effort into this, I feel I could make a full time income. I can't find a job. Oh, Nobody's gonna hire me. Clearly, I'm unemployable. And eventually, I found Amazon. Um, I tried that and I didn't like it at first. And it was very tough because at the time of doing, you know, Amazon FBA, there was, there's no courses, there's no Facebook groups. There's no, right. you figure it out type of thing. Yeah, yeah. There was, there's no information about it because it was so brand new to the world that no one talked about it. And so I just, you know, started messing with that. I quit a little bit early on because I was just like, oh, this is kind of dumb. I don't understand it. I'm not making any money. And I just, thankfully I stuck at it just kept building and, you know, it was a it was a super super you know tough road even doing Amazon because I had had personal sh personal stuff in my personal life that would keep knocking me down. You know, like right. that like, was like kind of like the finger pointing type yeah, of yeah. It was just like yeah. it just like everything just every time you build get up a little bit in life. Like I would start building up my Amazon, get my inventory up, getting the money up a little bit, and then something like uh you know a relative be like oh my gosh I'm going to be evicted from my apartment tomorrow. I need sixteen hundred bucks. 
You know, otherwise oh, I want to be on the street. Wow. It's like crap. Mm. This is literally all the money I have to my name. I've been I've been building like a year to build this up. Okay, here you go. I don't want you to get evicted. Lose all my money, and then I had to start over, and then keep building, and then the next another month, same relative. <laughs> oh, I need to get blah 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 blah. I need money. I'm gonna get evicted again. And I'm just like I can't do this. Like I paid yeah. for your rent like three it's times. Draining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so eventually I had to tell this close relative I can't do it. They ended up getting evicted from their apartments, and they blame me for it. And I just stuck it. I got to the point where I had to cut everybody out of my life. I had to cut all the negative influences, everybody, wow. you know, parents, relatives, close people that you most people wouldn't cut out. And I just grinded on Amazon, put my head down for a few years, and just buckled, just kept at it, kept at it. Um, and you know, fast forward to the present time, um, my business is on scale to do 1.5 million in sales for 2023. Thank you, sir. That's nothing. You know, just grinding, put in the work. <laughs> definitely you know. blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. So yeah, it's it was it's been a wild journey, um, and you definitely learn a lot about yourself and learn mm -hmm. a lot about people and just you know becoming the person that you want to become to attract the good people into your life. You yeah, know, I guess. It, it took you having to like do the cut. Yes. And the co common really denominator cool. and all that was me. Like I was the, t I was right. a toxic person too. Not everybody around me. It was all of us, me, them, you know, like attracts like If you're a shitty person. You got toxic traits. Well, guess what? Those are the type of people you're going to attract into your life. You want to get those people out of your life. You need to heal and become better, become happier. And then you'll attract better into your life. You know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Oh, somebody wrote in the comments. Uh, she said, so proud of you for overcoming your struggles, Jameson. I work with patients struggling with substance use uh, mm. on a daily basis. Keep on being an inspiration. Oh, that's awesome. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I love like sharing my journey so much. Like, so honestly, like out of everyone, everything in my life, all the good things, like I connect so much. I don't know. I have such an extra huge love for like, mm -hmm. like addicts, drug addicts. Yeah. and recovering addicts and like homeless people people that have nothing and just are in a crappy place in life like i i connect with those like those are the people that i love so much it's just like mm -hmm. it's hard to get out of those situations and you know thankfully i i was able to do that so like i try you know everywhere i go on facebook instagram is like just kind of share my journey because like you know you never know like Absolutely. when your your story could be the key to somebody else's prison you know that oh, you plant a seed in them that could unlock for them to change their life for the better, to get clean, to get sober, to improve their lives. And, you know, so I really try to just put that out there and just like lay out, you know, whatever I can and help people where I'm able to. And what's even like even more amazing sometimes is we'll, we'll listen to someone's story and we'll probably direct it to the person who needs it, which is mm -hmm. like awesome right yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't sometimes it's not necessarily the person who needs it who's watching but it could be mm -hmm. like people taking your message and delivering it to the people that need yes. it yes yes you know the possibilities which is awesome um i guess if you are to i mean you are in this you've done a lot of work that is mindset a lot of work that took that took you on a roller coaster i would say but you never gave up why didn't you ever give up Oh, that's a man, great question, dude. You got, dude, your questions are fire, man, for real. Um, honestly, man, I f felt like there was like, I had no options. Like it was like, I feel like I had, I had burned all the options I had, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you go through life and it's, and it's like, I, you know, I, by any means not like pity party or anything like that. Like I know yeah. tons of people have had it way worse than me growing up. Like it just grew up, you know, we were on welfare, just poor, you know, father was never around, you know, grew up in an urban area, like a lot of crime and gangs and stuff. And like, it's just like, like when you live in that lifestyle, like it's so hard to get out because you don't know anything else. Like right. all the yeah. people that live there, like they have the similar mindset and it's like, you go through your, it's like a poverty mindset. Like it's just, your mindset is just you know, like that. And I was like that for years. Like, you know, I'm still like, I'm growing and I'm like recognizing all the areas where I'm flawed and I'm trying to heal and grow. And it's so yeah. hard to get out of that, like that mindset of where you're living and your way you grow up. It's like that becomes so normalized. <laughs> you don't know anything different. Like, you don't know anything you know, else. Yeah. Wow. You go yeah. your whole life. And like, uh, um, like I, I was always just a miserable, depressed person. I was on, you know, 
pills for mental illness my whole life for the most part. You know, I mean, now I'm not like I juice, I eat healthy, like I, you know, see all the crap that's in the food. I like, you know, minimize that or eliminate it. And like now I'm, you know, healthy mentally inside and out. And I feel really good about, you know, that like that so many of our problems that we have, we can heal them naturally, definitely, you know, with just a, a decent diet, you know, but like, it's like, you know, I, you know, my, I pretty much like up until I would say probably like, I, you know, 2018, where I had like my first like real, like realization, like I went to my first Tony Robbins event in San Jose and I went to the event and everybody there was so happy, high fiving, <laughs> hugging. Hey, like what the hell is wrong with these people? I, I, I kid you not. I'm like, there's no freaking way people are this happy like this is so <laughs> fake that's what i said this is happy dude there's no way these people are happy like this this is not real life <laughs> and i went to the event and i i it was like a decent event it was cool but i was just like this isn't real like this is this all is just not, like yeah fluff and like and it was real like it took me a few tony robbins events and some more healing and some more self-development and now where i'm at we're at 2023 now and i look back and yeah. then it's like I am one of those people now, like it took a lot of learning and growth and like, you have to deal with the, you know, like whether you have trial childhood traumas or bad things right. that happened to your past, you have to address those things. You need to lean into pain so you can heal and grow from those things. You need to heal. And like, you know, of course you're going to have scars and like, you know, all that stuff that you've been through, like you can grow from that and become happy, deal with that stuff head on. And, you know, going to Tony Robbins events really helped me, you know, oh, get break that poverty mindset that I had my whole life. It's it's the repetition with that. I mean, I remember going the first. I went to Dallas. That was my first event, and during the the Dickens process, where everybody's just like freaking crying their head yes. off, and they get a realization. And I'm like, by the end of it, I'm like, this is insane. But why don't I get a realization? Like all these people who are on the floor are crying, but then I realized whether it's culture or the traumas like that you mentioned. They're there. You're like an onion peeling and you eventually get that breakthrough or realization once you peel far enough to say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. this is like a pattern that I'm pushing away. Yes. Like I'm open, you know, basically, which is pretty awesome. Yes, and it takes a definitely. lot to take a lot. But you, really you, went, you said you went to a few uh, Tony Robbins events? Yeah, that was my first one. Um, uh -huh. was, I didn't really care for it. And I ended up going again. That was, I think, in like the beginning of 2018. And then he had another one in New Jersey at the end of 2018 that I went to. That's um, the one I went to as well. But I think I was volunteering at that okay. one. Okay. Okay. You're crew in there or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I went to that one, went in with an open mind, and I actually got prepared for that one mentally, you know, lost a little bit of weight, ate a little bit more better, and like kind of like <laughs> – knew that I wanted to be there for the long days because the first event I was like falling asleep in my chair I was bored I was on my phone I was like I would spend hours just walking around the stadium because I was just so bored and tired and you know um oh. but I went to it and crushed it and you know it it, it was a great event and um yeah. I like how do they stay happy this was Four exactly days and you know and with it, no and alcohol found, or pills exactly, or no. yes exactly <laughs> it was great um and then I got to crew uh, 2019, November in Miami. You crewed? Uh, yeah, what? and it was amazing. It was fun to give Ooh. back and talk to the new people. Like, you know, just like I would, I literally like, I crewed, but I spent most of my time just walking around the halls and like just talking <laughs> to people. Like just the, the, the people that are new to the event would just, cause you have yeah. a crew shirt on, they would just come up to you and it's like, oh, this is your first event. We you know, what do you experience? Like, and it's like, I had like just so many conversations with people. Like they would just come up to you and just like unload. Like it was yeah. their first event. They were like new and they, they just unloaded just like without even knowing you. Like I had this one lady come up to me, man, dude, it was like, she, you know, it was her first events. And to this day, like, 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 I, I don't even, I, the funniest thing, I don't even know this lady's name. I don't remember her name. I just remember her and her story. She came to me. I'm like, you know, I'm crewing, you know, and I was like, told her how helpful the, the events have been for me. And she said, great. You know, I hope this is good for me too. She was like, I, she was like, I really want to walk on walk on the fire or whatever because my my daughter just she died in a car crash and her her car burned up, and I was just oh like, my I opened my eyes out when she told me that, and to this day, like it still brings me to tears thinking oh about that, God. and like she came up to me and told me that, and like we hugged and you know I cried, she cried, and like it was like, 
she was there to heal and grow. And it was like, you know, people will tell you stories like that. And it's just like, it's yeah, the community has been great, man. This is events have been yeah, super. Bro, the, 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 the stories that people share on, you know, but it's like, you know, we get to honor those people, you know, it's so amazing mm -hmm. for them to, despite how vulnerable they are and just show up because they want to heal rather than give up. Yeah. 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 Incredible. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, man. That's, that, sure. that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, we were talking about earlier your Amazon journey. And one thing that, that I always see you do is travel. Uh, you're always going somewhere. What, what, what is happening there? What inspires that? Uh, we'll talk more about that. But it's, 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 it looks like a pretty cool journey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, I, I just I love to travel. I love to get in my car. I love to drive around yeah. the country. I love just meeting people. I love to eat. I love food, man. That's my favorite hobby is eating for sure. And I just like <laughs> being able to travel and try foods in different cities, different towns, different states. And I like recording my journey along the way of where I'm at, what I'm doing. And, um, you know, it's cool that, you know, anywhere there's, you know, a Target, a Walmart, a Barnes & Noble or GameStop, I can, you know, go find profitable products and sell them on Amazon and make money, which will fund, can fund my road trips around the country, right. you know? Wait, so, so it's, are you, are you traveling? Uh, that's, that's a question I had in my mind. Are you traveling to go to those shops or are you traveling yeah. just to have fun and to kind of like, I mean, traveling both? To both because they go hand in hand. I mean, the finding the profit, the profitable pro yeah. product to sell online that funds me being able to travel. So, um, you know, I, I love to do it. You know, I love to shop and I love to find products to sell on Amazon and it, everything goes hand in hand and I love it. <laughs> that works out. Um, and I guess with all that travel, I know you said you're keeping healthy. How are you balancing all that out to stay healthy, to, you know, possibly physical fitness or. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, uh, this year I actually, I started to d dive into fasting. Um, uh, I do my own version of intermittent fasting. Um, I started that January 3rd, um, nice. and I'm down almost 30 pounds now. Um, Holy. I feel good and i literally like i eat like when i'm on the road it's easier because like when you're driving eight nine hours a day or you're constantly going into stores like you're busy your mind is focused on the business like i don't even think about food like i'll have my water and then as long as i can like it uh, i can find a juice shop i'll juice one or two times a day i'll drink a bunch of water i'll have a coffee and like i'll go the whole day like i'll go you know 14 to 22 hours you know without a meal and then I'll eat one meal. Sometimes when I'm home, I'll probably eat two meals a day, but sometimes yeah. just like one meal a day, one or two meals a day. And like, kind of like when I first started doing this, like my first day fasting, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go as long as I can without food. I've never really done this. So tonight, <laughs> when I eat my first meal, I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to eat a meal fit for a king. So if I want to <laughs> eat a hamburger, French fries, chicken wings, whatever, like just I'm going to eat that. And so for the first like couple of weeks, I was doing that where it's like I'm eating once a day but I'm going to eat whatever I want. So that kind of like, that kind of like built up the momentum of me going through the whole day without food and then just eating one meal that I love, you know? And, uh, and I, and I did that for like, probably honestly, no, it was probably longer than a couple of weeks, probably about a month. And like, I lost like 10 or 12 pounds in the first month of doing that, like <laughs> doing one meal a day, but eating not the healthiest food. You're like, you're like I could eat whatever I want. <laughs> the funny thing is that I even felt better mentally after that first month. Like I felt more yeah, like your body is getting detoxed. When you go like 20 hours, 18 hours without food, like I don't know, it's so weird. You have this weird feeling about your body, like this you almost get like this like extra I don't know if it's clarity or energy or it's like you feel I don't know. I, I can't even explain it, but like I just feel better about myself when I'm oh, for like 18 hours and then I'll eat whatever I want. You know, I'll go go the next morning, I'll get up and I'll do it all over again. You know, I'll drink, you know, four, <laughs> five, six, seven bottles of water. I'll have a couple shots of espresso in the morning. If I can get to a juice bar, I'll do that. You know, ginger shots and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm listening to audio books every day. I'm reading books. Um, you know, I get up and when, when, I'm at, when I'm at home, it's a little bit easier. You know, I'll get up yeah. in the morning. Uh, I may write my journal. I may read my Bible. I'll, I start my day with a bottle of water. Um, right. I, I have a good water filter at home. So like it flushes out all the BS. Um, I'll juice in the morning and, you know, you know, do coffee. And it's like, that's all I ate. Like I, I my last meal was at like 10 o'clock last night. I had, uh, 
chicken wings and a cinnamon roll. Um, <laughs> it's, that is a weird mix, bro. Yeah, yeah. So it's been like I've no food 15 hours, and I don't plan on eating till dinner tonight. You know, and just continue wow. to drink water, and just I feel amazing. You know, I'm losing weight. I feel better. I feel happier. Um, you know, just kind of just no, do things. It, it, it's true with fasting because uh, you know you're leaving your body for 15 hours to it's it's taking that energy that would normally use for breaking down your meals or whatever to kind of detox you and stuff. Yeah. So I did something I did something like that um when did I start? Like two months ago. I, I did it for like two weeks only though. And it was just you're just eating fruits mm -hmm. and you're I'm drinking um this particular bag of herb that I bought. Mm -hmm. um from this guy who does it in canada like he ships it from canada and basically it was just drinking the herbs and doing the fruits and and that's it and the fasting i was fasting because wow. you know we had the the ramadan holiday for muslims yeah. so we yeah. have to fast from sunrise to sunset so i was doing that i'm like you know what i'm gonna take advantage of that we're doing that for a month and i lost 10 pounds um, awesome good for you my god it, it, it was a little challenging i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah it can't some days definitely it has its days <laughs> but when i jumped on the scale i'm like all right all right it was <laughs> <laughs> and you're right you do get that clarity and stuff and um you 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 uh you went through your morning routine real quick and i really wanted to ask to yeah. ask you about that a little bit if you can tell us a little bit more about your morning routine um yeah definitely a little bit um, deeper I, in what you do yeah I'm, I'm super big into juicing um like i love to juice like i feel like i think juicing could cure so many issues that we have 100%. like like um like like probably this is probably i don't know maybe i don't know 15 years ago give or take a couple years um like i was on you know uh, a bunch of different pills for mental illness and like you know i had manic depression bipolar like i was on all these medications and the medications made me feel worse you know i was tired all the time i was more depressed i couldn't get out of bed some days like it was just wow. like i felt like crap i felt worse and you know i i came across this documentary like 15 years ago called uh, fat sick and nearly dead um it's a documentary about juicing and this guy uh his name is joe cross he makes a documentary about juicing and dude's way overweight he's got all these health issues he's on like he's taking like 20 different pills a day for all his oh issues and, and i mean this guy just looking at his face you could just tell he's not a healthy person and he takes us on like a 60-day journey of him juicing for 60 days no food and the dude lost like 80 pounds he got off Damn, all his money by yeah, the end good. of the journey like the dude's fate he's glowing and he's just like a whole new person and i'm just like that inspired me to start juicing you know like 15 years ago now i think i think the documentary came out in like 2004 or five or six or somewhere around there it was a while back and like to this day i still juice and i still like it like that thing inspired oh, me to start juicing and i'm on yeah, zero yeah. pills like i don't go through like depression like i mean i have my days where it's like you have different moods yeah it's just what here. normal humans go through but like i don't <laughs> go through that depression where i'm in bed for a week or days yeah. and i can't face the world and it's like you know like it's like i feel amazing about myself on the inside because like i'm, I'm feeding myself you know i juice beets and carrots and kale and i do ginger so every i have a ginger i do i i i'll juice like a, in a mason jar a big mason jar i'll juice a ton of ginger a ton of turmeric lemon and apple and i'll do like three four of those shots throughout the day in my mason jar and i'll just pour <laughs> a shot here or there throughout the day and i'm doing shots all day long i'm drinking my water my filth my good like this i don't i try not to drink bottled water but like when i'm out on the go i will oh so your fill yeah 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 i try to do my filter at home i have a i have a berkey water filter which gets rid of all the crap and the floor and nice. all that stuff and um i feel better like i mean like i can go and eat fast food tonight and like not affect my mood and like before when when i wasn't doing all these healthy things like too much sugar or too much fast food would affect how i felt how my depression was or oh, like it would make it worse and like you know i think refined sugar from like candy and sweets and stuff like that like really <clears throat> takes a toll on our mental health like it it's really enhances it is yeah. so it's so scary to like start learning about those ingredients that aren't the things that we it eat is. like the candies and all that and it's like holy like decisions and you know to let those exactly. ingredients go <laughs> i know dude it's so crazy like 
when mm -hmm. I first started getting into juicing like 15 years ago, and I'm like, I won't go too far off track. Like yeah. they called me a conspiracy theorist for saying like the sugars and the, the stuff in the food is bad for us. That's making us sick and causing all a lot of problems. Like people talked to me like I was in, like I was like a lunatic, like a lunatic. And I'm like, no. And now, you know, fast forward 15 years, yeah. more people are more like, OK, our food is oh, no, it, a lot of. And it's they're, like, they're, cat they're catching up to it. bro. Yeah, my, it's my, like, dude, our, yeah, it's wild. My my um, my mom. She she has rheumatoid arthritis, which is like arthritis, but I feel like ten times worse because you're always in pain. Mm. Oh. And they gave her like those pills, but it's like the doctor was honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. There's no cure for this, and it's just gonna keep it asleep. And she just she just never connected with that medication. She was juicing, so now ten years. Like if she never if she doesn't take those pills, her body turns into, into a vegetable. But ten years later of just juicing. And she doesn't take those pills. That's what wow. keeps her healthy. And it's yes, it, it, it works, bro. They just it really keep does. Keep the it really does. Yeah, I, that documentary I mentioned, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Yeah. I highly recommend watching that. Fat, and it has Sick, and Nearly Dead. Everybody, check yes. it out. I'm gonna check it, it out. I yeah. haven't, I haven't it, it's it. amazing. Um, you can actually watch it on YouTube for free. Um, um, and, they, and there's a part two to it too also, but yeah, dude, it's like, it's got another lady on there that suffered from like chronic migraines her whole life. And then she did a juice fast within like four days, migraines cured, done, no more migraines. Like, wow. you know, and it's like so many of our like little issues we have with us can be healed with, you know, the right and I, nutrients. And, and to like, and to like, just to make everybody realize it's just those small changes that you can make yes. in your yeah. life that can like mm -hmm. just change everything around. That's and right. it's not, you know, it's not going to be fast, right? It's not going to be yeah. fast, but it's just going to take you taking some action. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. It starts with an apple a day, you know, like it's, yeah. it's really that easy. I guess what, what inspires you to keep going? Um, honestly, man, like I just want to strive to become better every day. You know, I think that's super important. Like, I mean, for me, you know, like, you know, I, I don't want to say all men, but just for me, like. I always want to get better. Like, I don't want to get older and weaker and short, you know, fatter and unhealthier. I want to get better <laughs> as I grow, you know, and, you know, and it's, you know, like, this is one of the most cliche quotes ever. It's like, you know, motivation will get you started. Discipline will keep you going. Like, oh, I have God. zero motivation yeah. to do this stuff. Like, I have no motivation. Like, my, if I could carve out the perfect life, I would sit on the couch and watch Netflix and watch TV <laughs> shows and eat junk food morning to night if i could do that and not you know like not be miserable i would do that for the rest of my life that would be the perfect life for me but i don't do that because i know that's not going to bring me happiness you know yeah. it's going to make me depressed it'll, it'll give you like short-term happiness exactly and so <laughs> i do all these things because i'm disciplined in becoming a better person i have no like some days i'm motivated some days i'm not a lot of days i, I have no motivation but i get up and do it every day because i know yeah. if i want to be happy if i if i slack too much in a certain area of my life it's gonna it's gonna go off into other areas if i eat like crap for a week well that's gonna Ooh. affect my mood and then if it affects my mood it's gonna affect my relationships because then i'm probably gonna be you know more negative or more complaining or more you know defend you know like and then i'm gonna my relationships are gonna struggle right and then okay well then you know something else is gonna struggle, and that's a domino effect so like i do little things in my area positive things every day so that way i'm continuing <clears throat> to grow even if it's slow like i'm at my own yeah. pace i'm not in a race with anybody else except myself you know it, oh, I, I feel like be better than me yesterday. I feel like, yeah, I feel like changing your life for the better or for the worse works the exact same thing. Because <laughs> really that's right. But you were telling us about your story earlier about how one thing led to another. It's exactly that. Like one decision started, and then it just went into different areas, and then it went to pills and evictions, and 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 you know what I mean. So it's yeah, it's crazy. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Wow, that's insane. Um, the other question that I had for you, what was the funniest story you ran into when you're going on the road? <laughs> if there's a story you, that's in your mind. Sorry, say that one more time. You kind of cut uh, my brain cut. No worries. I said, what was the funniest thing or story you encountered while going on the road? Oof. Um, or weirdest. Any. <laughs> 
Let's see here. Give me a sec here. Um, I would say one of my crazier stories. Um, I was on a sourcing trip. I was I had just left Las Vegas. I went to a convention in Las Vegas. I think this was back in 2017 in like March or something like that. And I was driving to, I believe, California. And I think I, I was in between like Nevada and Arizona, but on my way to California. And I went to an area with no signal and it was, you know, probably 11 or midnight. It was dark out and no signal. And I'm following my GPS and it brings me down a dirt road. And like, Ooh. it's like literally just straight up dirt. And it's like, there's grass and complete darkness on one side. And there's some grass and a railroad tracks on the other side. <laughs> no houses, no paved roads, no humans, no cars, no animals, no nothing. And I drive for like 20 minutes and I'm like, crap, like, I don't know what to do here. I'm just going to keep on going. And I kept on going. I thought it would lead me to a real road. And it, it ended up leaving, le leading me to a sand pit, basically a big open area, just all sand and gravel shit. and dirt and still no signal. So I'm like, shit, all right, let me, let me turn around in this gravel, you know, dirt, sand thing and turn around and go back the way I came. Well, the, when I did my little roundabout to turn around and go back i ended up getting stuck in all oh, the no. sand and the dirt and it's the middle of the dark there's nobody around i have zero signal like it says no service on my cell phone and i'm stuck and it's so dark out there i'm in the middle like some like Bro, you're in the middle of nowhere Shit. i can't see anything i have my flashlight on my phone and it, you can see a couple feet in front of you i have no idea what type of creatures are out there and I'm like, crap, all right, well, I got to think fast. What am I going to do? Like, I, I try to get in and out, and I don't want to, like, keep going because it's just all it is is just getting deeper and deeper every time I try. So I'm like, all right, crap, well, what am I going to do? I open the car. I'm starting to dig around to see if I can find anything that could get me out. And I'm like, all right, what can I do? What can I do? I'm looking around. I see a lot of, like, pebbles and rocks, like, you know, the size of quarters all around. I'm like, all right, let me – I had had uh, – I had just traveled across country from New York to here – so I had like a, a big container of like salt for like snow and stuff. So I just <laughs> dumped that, I dumped that thing out and I literally started running around in the dark, filling up this container full of rocks, all these little pebbles that, you know, I'm just filling this thing up. And oh yeah, at the same time, it's still dark out, you know, and I had this air horn in my car that I just loved to mess with people. And like, I didn't know what type of animals were out there. So like every 30 seconds, <laughs> right, like, there's anything, any like creatures out there walking to scare them off. So it's like, I'm um, grabbing gravel and dirt and rocks and stuff. And Wah! like, you know, and this thing is loud. You could probably hear it from miles away. Bro, and, you were inviting them, man. <laughs> yes, dude, it was freaky. <laughs> Got the flashlight of my phone in one hand. It's like, it was it was nuts and i ended up filling up the thing up and then i'm like oh you know i th I, I remember seeing some youtube video many many years prior where they took their floor mats and stuck them under the tires so i'm like all right let me stick the floor Ooh, that's mat a good idea tires. and then i started pouring all the rocks around the tires and then i just put it in drive and i gunned it and it, I, it was enough to get me out of there i went grab my floor mats threw them back inside and then i drove back and got back to normal road that's wild um, <laughs> yeah it was crazy it was it was nuts i had no skill to get out of that that was just all quick thinking and you know remember to put the floor mats down by the tires and thankfully it was enough to give me a little push and get out of there <laughs> damn i guess we um, you know you just need that pressure for your brain to say i think we can find a way <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah it was crazy um i've had a lot of little silly things like that happen um <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've encountered bed bugs, you know, like in hotels, like four or five times, uh, you know, oh my my God, years. that's annoying. I've stayed at many, 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 many hundreds of hotels around the country. And like, you go to sleep and you wake up in the middle of the night with like itching and burning all over your body. And you have all these red uh, pelts, and pelts all over you, like getting attacked by bed bugs or biting you and sucking your blood. And it's, <laughs> yeah, I've had that happen like five times over the years. It's healthy um, blood too, man. Yeah, they have a they they'll be cured. Juice. Yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, I've you know like been in my hotel room and like people like sometimes they'll be like once in a while there'd be like a fight in the hallway, people arguing. You know, one time I was like, I don't remember what state I was in, probably Ohio or something. 
somewhere in that area. And I was working on a shipment. I was boxing up toys and taping boxes and, you know, prepping items to ship into Amazon. And yeah. I heard two gentlemen, I don't want to say they're gentlemen, two men. <laughs> they weren't gentlemen. They didn't act like it. And they were arguing outside of my door. And I like look through the people and they're like arguing and like, you know, one guy's threatening one guy with a knife. And I'm just like, oh shit, like, oh my gosh, like they went on for like five minutes out there. Like, you know, just like silly little crazy things like that. And, um, but thankfully I've had, you know, I've been wow. doing it for, you know, a long time that I've only got a few crazy stories. Oh, that's good. Well, I'm glad you didn't get stuck in that. Sandbox. Yeah. That's, that, that's a wild. That's a wild. With darkness all over. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'd probably be praying in the car first. <laughs> get out. Uh, well, you just meant you just mentioned um, about you know boxing stuff or Amazon stuff. I guess for people that don't know how that how that even works, can you tell people like with um, Amazon FBA and and how that works and stuff? Yeah, yeah, definitely. If yeah, they so wanted I'm, to start it as a business, yeah, basically, like in a nutshell, like I pretty much go out to Targets and WalMarts and I take my my phone and I have an Am I have a Amazon seller app and I scan the barcodes um and target walmart and then i see if there's a listing on amazon if there's a listing on amazon it'll pop up it'll tell you what it's selling for and it'll show like a rank so you can get an idea of how many units sell a month and it'll show the amazon fee so you can see like oh like this item is two dollars at walmart it's selling for 15 on amazon after all the fees all net six dollars okay i can make three four bucks on this you know so i go out to target and walmart i find all the profitable products and then um, I'll do a sh an Amazon shipment where I pretty much I label all the items so that way Amazon knows they're mine, they belong to me. Yeah. And then I pretty much put them in one or two boxes and I ship all, I'll, I'll shoot, ship, you know, 30 to 50 units in one box and I'll ship them all to Amazon. And then they'll get, they get listed on Amazon. And then when a customer buys it, Amazon will fulfill that order, use my <laughs> scannable barcode to find my item, and then they'll box it up and they'll ship that item to the customer. Dude, does it? Did they, did they give you like a limited amount of time and how long you can leave it in their warehouse and, or something like um, that? Not necessarily a limit, but they do charge you storage fees. Um, they okay. charge you monthly storage fees and then they'll charge you long-term storage fees. So like if your item is, I don't know, I think it's like if your item has been sitting for like six months in their warehouse, they'll yeah. start charging you way more than they were. And then also for like quarter which four, is which is October, yeah. November, December, they charge you four times storage fees. So if you're Dang. paying, you know, 10 cents a month to hold this, then they're going to charge you 40 cents a month to hold it. And then on top of that, if you have long-term storage fees, they'll charge you even more. So it can, so basically they're incentivizing you to sell, 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 and not hold Amazon. Oh, well, which makes sense. Products. Yeah. I mean, it's like keep them moving. Yes, you know, exactly. And I guess if you wanted if you wanted your items back, then you'll have to pay for shipping back, or they you ship you pay back. you pay for a removal order fee, and they'll ship the uh, item back to you. Gotcha. But I mean, it's this is the I guess that gives people a lesson before you dive into business like this. You have to make sure you do your homework. You connect yep. with the right people. Well, speaking of the right people, I guess how did you create? your network or is there a network that people can join to like you know be with the right people and learn this trade yeah um you know through the journey i you know started to get active on facebook and instagram and in facebook groups that are amazon and reseller you know oriented um and just connect with the right people um when i first started doing this um like i was doing you know ebay for a few years and then i started doing amazon i was you know probably a few months in on amazon and like one day i was like you know i wonder if like i, I had never met another reseller in my life i didn't i was friends with resellers there was no reseller community really like right, i didn't yeah. know anyone that doing this and i was just like you know one day i had this thing, I was like i wonder if anybody else does this around the country like, <laughs> like if there's got to be other people so it's like I, I was like on Facebook, but I was just, you know, would just go, you know, it's just like normal, like you, you're friends with friends and you read their posts and, you know, nothing right. more than that. And I was like in the search thing, I'm like, you know, reseller, Facebook, you know, whatever, you know, and I found some free Facebook groups and there was like other people. Some of these groups had hundreds of people in it. I'm like, wow, there's other people that do this. You found your people. <laughs> yes. I thought they were my people. So I joined uh -oh. all the free Facebook groups and I'm new. And so yeah. I'm probably very like annoying or like I would post in the groups because I was having issues with 
how to create a shipment and like the yeah. process of, you know, getting the product to Amazon and listed. And like, there was no one to teach me. And like, you know, like it was hard to learn because there was no where to learn it. Like you literally right. had to guess sometimes. And so I would ask in Facebook groups and like, all I remember to this day, I don't remember names or anything, but like, I just remember people that were mean and just rude about it, you know? Wow. Like just people were just like, it's like almost like it was like people didn't want to share the secret. Like they didn't want any more resellers coming around. Like, no, you go figure it out yourself. And like nobody yeah. would help, which no one is owes me anything. I'm not, I don't expect everyone to do the work for me. Like it got to the point where it's like, it would be simple questions. Nobody helped me. It got to the point in my post, I will pay you money. Teach me how to do this. You know, like, I, pay, I, I value your time and w what you do in your business. I don't know how to do that. I'll give you money. Show me what to do. You know, and it's like people were jerks and rude and like, you know, and so I made like a vow to myself, a promise, like, you know what, I'm going to learn how to do this thing and I'm going to help people, you know, I'm going to share, you know, and, you know, I, and that's what I did. So like I, that I, I'm glad that happened to me because it made me, all right, I'm going to figure out how to do this and I'm going to help everybody that I can, you know, I'm going to be helpful. I'm going to share advice. I'm going to, you know, be open to accepting advice. And, you know, I started making friends with all these people online. And eventually I found a paid Facebook group that was like a hundred bucks a year to join. And I didn't even have a hundred bucks at the time. My roommate that I had in Nashville, he actually gave me the hundred dollars to pay for the group because I couldn't wow. afford dollars. And I joined this group. <laughs> and to this day, some of my best friends in real life, I met in that Facebook group. Like wow. I'm still friends with a ton of people in that group and uh, probably like 10 people from that group to this day are still my best friends, like in real life. Like, and I just, you know, slowly built out a great network of people and, you know, started getting more active on Facebook and Instagram. And then you just start gravitating towards the right people. And now I got a good network of, you know, friends and like, even I have a lot of friends in like the Tony Robbins community that don't do Amazon or sell on eBay, but they're still yeah. my network. People, don't necessarily like, exactly exactly yeah. like and i have their back they have my mind I've, I've had probably over 10 you know people in tony robbins community be like hey i just started amazon can you help me out you know and i'll help them or like oh hey my relative just started amazon here can they reach out if they have any questions of course i got you you know like so it's awesome. like you know everybody can like everybody gives everybody will have you know like it's like you can learn and grow in all different aspects you there's know? enough to go there's enough to go around there really know? is Really Especially is. when you have like an open heart like that, you know what I mean? You get blessed. Like you might not see where it's going, how, you know what I mean? Like it's just things meeting together and it comes right back, which is, which is yeah. beautiful. Um, are you, I know, I think I asked you this the last time, but um, are you teaching this to people? Like, do you have a business that surrounds teaching people this, like a, a course or a class or something that you're doing? Uh, so um, I actually, things. so last time you asked me, I, I, I've never really done anything like that. Like I've coached one-on-one, -on -one, maybe yeah. a few people a year here and there, but I never like advertise. I'm not out like actively trying to sell it. So like if people yeah. will come to me and they want one-on-one -on -one help, I'm happy to, you know, they can hire me and I can help them. But I'm actually in the process. I probably won't be, it probably won't be up and running probably for probably, you know, three months or so, but I'm actually in the process of building a Facebook group, kind of like the first right. group that I, that I joined. Because I feel yeah. like in the Amazon community that lacks that that feeling that I had in that group, that first paid hundred dollar paid Facebook group I joined, that like okay. sense of family and that small sense of community that I had in that group. I feel I've never had that in any other paid group I've ever joined That's since awesome. then. And you know, I want to join that. I want to build that. I want to build my own community like that, where I, you know, attract like-minded people in in a group where we can all learn and grow, and I can share my yeah, journey. the right people to come together. Yeah, exactly. So I will. Yeah, in a few months, I definitely will be up and running with a paid Facebook group that I'm super excited to. You know, I hold I hold you accountable. You got, of course, <laughs> please do, please do. Uh, that that's one thing. Uh, I do a lot. I did that with a bunch of things. Like we did it with juicing when it comes mm. to accountability. Um, yeah. I went a little hardcore on, on, on that group though. I had people, <laughs> I had people take a picture of their juice uh, every day and, and put it in the group. But we, we, we made progress because you know, awesome. of that level awesome. of accountability. So accountability really works. Uh, thanks for that. I have this question. I feel like uh, this is more from, a limiting belief that a lot of people will have. And I want to read it word for word. What do you say to people that look at successful people and say, oh, that can never happen to me? That's a good question. That's great. Um, well, 
I guess first I would probably say like, you know, what does success mean to you? Because success can be so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, like I always, you know, thought probably like the vast majority of people, I thought success was money, you know? Right. Um, and when I, when I started doing Amazon and I like was in it for a few years and like, I had this goal back around like 2018, like my goal was to sell a million dollars on Amazon and, you know, make a hundred grand. That was like my mission. I was so focused on doing that because I thought that was, I hit that, I would hit that mark and I would be happy with my life. And I never hit that mark that year. I think I did around 800,000 in sales that year, but I was the most miserable person I ever was in my entire life. Like I, I was making a decent money, you know, 800,000 in sales. I was doing decent in profit, but I was so miserable. Like I was the most miserable I'd ever been in my life. And so like I took a lot that year, you know, the two Tony Robbins events and hiring a, my personal development coach that I still work with today and like really taking steps back so I could take the proper steps forward. And now it's like, I do not look at success. money does not level my measure of success. Like I don't give wow. a fuck how much, sorry for swearing. I don't know if you're no, no, PG. Okay. like, I don't care. Like, you know, I have friends that make 10 times, 20 times, 30 times more money than I do. And I'm happier than some of those people. So to me, I'm more successful wow, that's, that's than crazy. they are, you know, like, so, you know, it goes along to, you know, and I, you know, it goes along to what does success mean to you now? Yes. Like the more money now I'm at the level, the more money I make, the happier I get because I can use that money for right. good to invest in, you know, you know, more juicing. Like, you know, last year I, I bought my water filter. It was like 600 bucks. <laughs> that was like, I'd never spent that much money on such a, you know, minuscule thing, you know? And, you know, I'm still using it and I love it. And so it's like the more money I make, I can buy different things that can help benefit my body, help benefit my soul, make me healthier and happier, make me live longer. Mm -hmm. So like to me, I'm at that level where it's like if I make more money, I can become more happy because I can invest more back into myself, which in turn around just I'm I feel more successful. You know, I can walk into a room and say I'm one of the most successful people in this room because I'm actually happy. You know, how many people can say that? It's like, yeah, that, that, that's you know, amazing. Yeah, we've been that, like. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was say, go. I don't say, I don't say, yeah, you know, I will say that. I think we've been brainwashed as a society to think that success and happiness is wife, kids, family, you know, nine to five, 2.5 kids, suburbs, you know, <laughs> decent house, all these Vacation. things. Exactly. <laughs> you know, keeping up with the Joneses or whatever they call it, you know, like that's what you need to be happy. And it's like, how many people do we know that have been had that they've been divorced? remarried, divorced, multiple kids. Like, I don't want that. I would rather be happy. Right. You know, it's like, so it's like, I think like telling people like you need to find what happiness and success means to you and not what the surrounding people tell you it is, you know? Yeah. Um, like, you know, you need to find what is important to you. Like, you know, like whether it's like, you know, I have friends that have like parents and family members that say like, all right, this is what our family does. This is what you need to do with your life. And like, I have friends that have done those things. They've gotten the successful jobs and they're not happy at them, but they just did that to make their loved ones, you know, happy right. and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, I've had friends at Amazon that did that. And they eventually they started doing Amazon and they were able to get rid of that. And now they enjoy their lives. And they're more happier and enjoy what they do. So, you know, I think honestly, man, like, dude, I came from nothing. I, I, went to college. I dropped out. I was a drug addict. I literally am unemployable in the United States of America. I can't, I couldn't get a job to push carts. So it's like, if you think that you're struggling or you can't do that, I mean, I found my wow. way. Like, sure. it's like, we live in a day and age where it's like, if you have a freaking smartphone and an internet connection, I don't think yeah. there's nothing you can't accomplish that you can't do. I think we live in the easiest time to be alive, to find something that you could do to make money at. I mean, literally, I mean, there's people that sit at home in their underwear and they play Call of Duty and they make millions of dollars a year, you know, shooting people on a computer screen, you know, like wild dude, people stream <laughs> like and make yeah. money. They make YouTube video. Like, I mean, there's that, that one guy who like, I think he, like he, like there's, I mean, there's a tons of people that make YouTube videos. Like the, the guy who like teaches you how to tie ties or change a tire. He's got like, you know, like, 
there's so many avenues where we can find a way to make it or whatever you think making it is like that you could find success. So it's like the only thing that's holding us back is ourselves, you know, and wow, so, I don't know. That's like a long winded answer, but I guess no, that's, 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 I feel like you're, you're like the idea is to kind of come back, which is mm -hmm. pretty awesome is to kind of come back instead of like going forward and trying to figure stuff out because the things that you have behind you could be the things that are messing with you. So no matter how much money you have, if you're not cleaning house, <laughs> exactly. you're going to remain a, miserable. Exactly. I was at an Amazon conference a few months back and one of the guys that runs the event, he said something along the lines of like not building your foundation on sand because you could build up so high it's just going to keep falling because your foundation is built on sand so you need to have a strong foundation so sometimes you need to take those steps back so you can take the right steps forward a hundred percent wow you yeah, know that's that's pure wisdom right there um and i feel like it's the only way and to, to you know to some level where you take care of of everything your internal your mindset and then it just becomes you know like a, a moving vehicle Mm. The money will come. The money will open. And, you know, as you described it, the money is not the essence to you. It's it's the things that it can move you to, the impact. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like 100%. there's a whole mission behind it. Mm -hmm. So once people see it's not the paper, it's the mission that carries all of that. That That's pretty incredible. I'll ask you one more question and, and you yes, know, sir. We'll, we'll be good. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of people – that are in this in this route. You know, they're probably in corporate, they probably have a retail job or whatever. I guess what's your advice to those people? How can they I guess continue for the moment, for the time being, you know, to kind of hustle and bustle through their corporate or whatever while trying to build something in the side. Not necessarily Amazon. It could be Amazon or anything else, but the kind of like what what advice would you have for them? Oh man. Um may not be the best advice because I never did that. You know, like I didn't have the nine to five or that other option, you know, to, to get an income. Like I just didn't have nothing. So it was my, you know, at the time I thought that was my only option was to, to do this harder because I didn't have anything to fall back on. I had no safety net or no backup plan or nothing. That was it. <laughs> I literally, there's so no safety net. If I, this doesn't work out, well, I'll probably end up homeless or something, you know, like, so, I mean, Gosh, I, don't, I would probably say, honestly, like, and again, since my background is eBay and Amazon, like, if you want to generate money or income so you can start a business, whether, whether, whatever it is, I would highly recommend starting like eBay because so many of us have profitable or like items around our house that are collecting dust in the drawers or on our shelves that could be worth a few bucks on eBay. Like if you want to start a certain a business and whatever that business is and you need money to fund that business, I mean, selling on eBay is like the perfect thing because you don't have to do it full time. You can invest right. a couple hours a week, you know, take a few pictures of an item. You list it on eBay. It sells. You go ship it out. Easy as that. You know, and if it doesn't, you lose nothing. Yeah, pretty exactly. much. You know, if it doesn't sell. Then guess what? It's going to sit on your shelf like it had been for years. You know? <laughs> so I know that's not the most sound advice just because I didn't do that, you know, as far as like, you know, trying to find a way to get out of the nine to five. But well, you did you, you did say something key, though, um, which will totally relate. Like they have to make it a must. Like if they want to do it on the side, they have to make it a must. And it became a must for you. Otherwise, yeah. like you knew what your consequences were if you didn't make it a must. So I yep. feel like maybe for those, you know, individuals on that route is make it a must and then look at what is the consequences that will happen if you don't <laughs> make it exactly a exactly you know it's very cliche but you know figure out what your why is to why you're going after that you know um yeah. uh, i'll i'll go quick because i know you want to wrap it up like one of my whys is like i'll just share a story with you um but this is i was probably 13 years old and um we didn't have any money at the time. My mom had bought me a Reebok t-shirt at Foot Locker at our local mall. And I never wore it. Still had the tags on it. And, you know, my mom was like, just go back to the store and return it. And you can, you can have the money or whatever for it. And like, it was like a 15, four. Yeah. It was like a $15 shirt and we didn't have the receipt for it. So 
it was a it was so I, I had caught the bus right before rush hour so it was 25 cents to get on the bus to catch the bus like 45 minutes to the mall i went by myself i got to the mall expecting them to let me return this shirt and they didn't let me return the shirt without a receipt so well i didn't have any money to get home from the mall and i i was relying on them refunding me the cash so i could catch the bus to get back home because now it's rush hour so the bus is like a dollar or something like that to get to get, mm -hmm. to get to get home and i had to walk home and it took me like i don't know like three hours to walk home wow and you know like I had to walk alongside of this busy highway road thing. And I walked for hours until I got, you know, almost halfway to a little over halfway to my house. And I saw a super America gas station. And back then this is, you know, back in the early nineties. So like the way these gas stations were set up, you go to pay at the cashier, the counters, like if you drop your change, all the change would roll under the counter. And sometimes you could find like a dollar under there. So I went <laughs> to the gas station with no money and I walked right up to the register, got on my hands and knees and I started digging under the register because I was hungry and I was thirsty. I just walked oh like two God. hours and I found 27 cents, which was exactly enough to buy uh, a cookie because there were 25 cents plus tax, 27 cents. I bought a cookie and then I went in the bathroom and drank water out of the faucet and I bought a cookie. Wow. Cents, and then I walked the rest of the way home. And like just that story to me, like, I don't ever want to live that way again. Like where we can't afford to catch the bus. We can't afford food. We can't afford to do anything. And like we had to rely on returning a T-shirt without the receipt, brand new T-shirt that we bought to get money. You know, and I just wow. that's like a, it's a silly little story to everybody else. But to me, I think about that and it's like. That well, makes me continue lifted. to work hard because I never, if I give up today, if I give up for another day, I will end up right back there. I always tell myself that will be you. If you don't continue to bust your ass, continue to work on you and have the discipline to keep on pushing forward in your personal life, and your business, you will, that will be you. And so that makes me Ooh. continue to push hard because I don't ever want to walk home from the mall again, three hours when you're 13 years old, you know, I have to go on your hands and knees to scrape out 27 cents off the floor to buy a cookie so you can eat because you're hungry and then wow. walk the rest of the way home. Like, I'm not going through that again. So I push and I always remember that story and, you know, many other stories that I've been through that continue to give me the discipline to push harder because I work hard on, you know, my life like somebody else is out there working just as hard trying to take what I have. A hundred percent. Wow. Oh, my God. That that That's so powerful. And it's it's a big big enough of a why to never let you have to not work hard and, and move forward to where you need to be mm. that's pretty dope man thank you so much for sharing of course, my uh, brother, of course. With, with us thanks i'm so glad we were able to make this happen yes um, let's and, pray that it falls <laughs> <laughs> it'll, 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 it'll fall through it'll fall through but thank you so much and you know i really hope um is there anything else you wanted to to share with everybody feel free um, yeah man i mean you know feel free to i just started i just started getting my youtube channel active again so i go i do youtube lives you know multiple times a week um i've got a bunch of pre-recorded youtube lives on there um and i'm gonna start i'm more active on my youtube channel um i'm super active on my instagram and my facebook so feel free to add me follow me on ig um and i share my journey i share personal business life everything i'm going through i'm sharing my wins my losses and just my journey that I'm taking and, you know, everyone's welcome to join and, you know, hopefully, you know, I, don't, I mean, any more people. And I'm guessing you have a whole different definition for failure now because it's just facing it, see what you learned and move on. <laughs> That's right. Fail forward, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pass me your uh, Instagram links and YouTube so I can put yes. it part of the description. All right. It would be awesome. But yeah yeah perfect. awesome thank you brother <laughs> Boom, got him baby <laughs> thank you so much man and I, I look forward for us to continue talking you know perhaps yeah, man. doing Most some more other interviews and you know going yes, deeper in some topics of course brother. Um, of course my friend but uh can't wait till our next interview because there'll be another milestone that we'll talk about so it'll be yes. cool awesome brother i'm looking forward <laughs> to it all right, brother. Have a beautiful weekend, man. Enjoy it. Awesome, Thank you man. so much. Again. You too, brother. We'll chat soon. Right. Peace. Take care. Bye -bye.